cells respond to changes in their environments. Let's see how this occurs. Meet Michelle the cell. Michelle, like all cells, is alive. All living organisms display what biologists call the characteristics of life. Today, we will be looking at how cells display two of these characteristics of life. These are responding to the environment and maintaining homeostasis. Cells, like all living organisms, respond to changes in their environment. For a cell in the body, the environment is the extracellular fluid. Some of the environmental components that affect cells include osmotic pressure, pH, temperature, hormones, and available nutrients. Responding to the changes in the environment enables an organism to maintain homeostasis. Michelle's friend mentions, Michelle, I am worried about you. You stayed home every day this week. Michelle responds, don't worry. I am just practicing homeostasis, the act of staying at home. Michelle's definition of homeostasis is not quite right. So let's see what it should be. Homeostasis is the ability of an organism to maintain the conditions of its internal environment, despite changes to its external environment. Organisms must respond to the environment in such a way to maintain their homeostasis. Every living organism has its own set of physiological conditions that must be maintained in order to sustain life. Allowing the internal environment of an organism to deviate too far in one direction or the other from its normal physiological state can result in illness and even death. The important conditions that must be continuously maintained by the cell include temperature, pH, osmotic pressure, available nutrients, and making sure there's not too many waste products built up in the cell. How do cells maintain homeostasis? Homeostasis is made possible by the cell membrane or plasma membrane. The membrane of the cell acts as a barrier that separates the inside of the cell from the outside of the cell. The membrane is selectively permeable. In this way, the cell membrane regulates what comes into the cell and what goes out of the cell. Substances that are allowed to freely cross the cell membrane include small uncharged molecules like oxygen, carbon dioxide, water, and ethyl alcohol. Also, lipid soluble molecules such as glycerol can freely move across the plasma membrane. Substances that cannot readily cross the cell membrane include larger molecules such as amino acids, simple sugars, and charged ions like sodium, potassium, and chloride. The cell membrane is selectively permeable due to its structure. The cell membrane is made up of a phospholipid bilayer. Phospholipids contain a phosphate group attached to two fatty acid tails. Let's see why this is so important. A phospholipid is made up of a hydrophilic head group. Hydrophilic means water lover. And it has two hydrophobic fatty acid tails. Hydrophobic means water fearing. The hydrophilic heads face the extracellular fluid and the intracellular fluid. The hydrophobic fatty acid tails face inward towards each other. They face away from the liquid because they are hydrophobic, thus creating a barrier. 
the phospholipids are not tightly held to one another like our skin cells are. The phospholipids do allow for some mobility of the embedded structures due to its somewhat fluid nature. This is referred to as the fluid mosaic model of the cell membrane. Think about a tub full of rubber duckies. The rubber duckies float on top of the water in a mono layer. Now put a baby in the tub. The duckies gently float out of the way. The baby can freely move around the tub and the duckies will move out of the way to allow for that movement. This is kind of how the proteins and other molecules embedded in the cell membrane are able to move around. What causes substances to move across the cell membrane? Atoms are always in motion. All of the matter that makes up you and everything you touch is made up of atoms. Those atoms are made up of subatomic particles. The subatomic particles are so small, the atom is actually way more than 99% empty space. Those particles are full of kinetic energy and they are always in motion. Because of this fact, there's something called Brownian motion. Brownian motion is the random motion of particles suspended in a fluid, a liquid or a gas, resulting from their collision with the fast moving atoms or molecules that are existing in that gas or liquid. Particles enjoy having some elbow room. Because of Brownian motion, Particles in solution naturally want to spread out as much as possible, filling up all of the available space until a state of equilibrium is achieved. A solution is made up of a liquid component and one or more solid components. The liquid component of a solution is called the solvent. The solid component or dissolved substances in the solution is called the solute. Let's say we fill a container with water. Then we add a permeable membrane that separates one side from the other. Next, we place some particles in the solution on one side of the membrane only. Then we wait. When there is a difference in the concentration of a solution, this is called a concentration gradient. When particles move from an area of high concentration to low concentration, this is called moving down the concentration gradient. This requires no energy. When particles move from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration, this is considered going up the concentration gradient or against the concentration gradient. This process requires energy in the form of ATP. Since this membrane is permeable to the particles that we have added, we will see movement of those particles from the side with higher concentration to the side with lower concentration until the concentration on both sides of that membrane is equal. This movement of particles from high concentration to low concentration is called diffusion. There is a driving force on all particles to go from high concentration to low concentration. Substances naturally want to travel from areas of higher concentrations to areas with lower concentrations until those concentrations are the same or at equilibrium. In order for us to get an idea of what happens in cells, we must use a semi-permeable membrane. So let's do this same demonstration using a semi-permeable membrane and a solute that is not permitted to pass through that membrane. This time, we add a semi-permeable membrane to that container of the water. And we'll add solute to one side. This solute is not able to cross this membrane. 
Since the solute is not able to cross the semipermeable membrane, water will move across the membrane in the direction to dissolve the most solute. The diffusion of water across a membrane is called osmosis. There is a property called the tonicity of solution. Cells are sensitive to changes in solute concentration in their environment because it creates osmotic pressure. The osmolarity or tonicity of a solution can be described qualitatively using the following terms. Hypotonic solution, isotonic solution, and hypertonic solution. A hypotonic solution will have a lower concentration of solutes or dissolved substances, and therefore will have a higher concentration of water molecules than the fluid inside of the cell. Since there are more particles inside the cell than there are outside, there is a driving force that makes them want to leave the cell or to travel from the area of high concentration inside the cell to an area of low concentration outside the cell, but they can't. However, the water molecules are able to cross the membrane. In a hypotonic solution, since there are less dissolved particles in the solution than inside the cell, there are more water molecules that are outside the cell than inside the cell. So that means there is a driving force on the water molecule that makes them want to go inside the cell. Water rushes into the cell in the direction of its own concentration gradient. Then water rushes into the cell. This causes that cell to swell. The cell can swell so much it can burst. Hyper means high. A hypertonic solution will have a higher concentration of solute or dissolved substances and therefore a lower concentration of water molecules than the fluid inside of the cell. There is a driving force on the dissolved substances inside of the solution that makes them want to travel from the area of high concentration outside of the cell to the area of low concentration inside of the cell, but they can't. So instead, water rushes out of the cell in the direction of its own concentration gradient. When water rushes out of the cell, the cell will shrink, shrivel up, and can die. This is called crenation. Cells in an isotonic solution are perfectly happy. In an isotonic solution, there is no net movement of water going into or out of the cell. In an isotonic solution, the solute concentration of liquid outside of the cell is the same as it is inside of the cell. The extracellular fluid in your body is isotonic. Plant cells respond a bit differently to changes in osmotic pressure than animal cells do because they have the added protection of the cell wall. Plant cells prefer to be in an isotonic environment, but they are a bit more resilient to osmotic changes than animal cells are. In a hypotonic solution, the plant cell will not burst, but instead the vacuole will fill up with fluid. In a hypotonic solution, the vacuole will become depleted of its water stores. What factors affect the rate of osmosis? Factors that affect the rate of transport in osmosis and diffusion include size and weight of the molecules, size of the concentration gradient, the available surface area, and temperature. Factor number one, molecular weight and size. Smaller, lighter molecules diffuse faster than larger, heavier molecules. Factor two, the size of the concentration gradient. When there is a large difference between the two concentrations, osmosis occurs faster. 
when there is a small difference between the two concentrations, osmosis will occur slower. Factor number three, available surface area. When there is only a small amount of surface area available for transport to occur, transport will occur more slowly. When there is a large surface area available for transport to occur, transport occurs faster. So when we section this cube into smaller cubes, we increase the surface area available for molecules to diffuse across greatly. Surface area to volume ratio. The larger a cell gets, the smaller the surface area to volume ratio gets. That means that less cell membrane is available to meet the needs of the volume of that whole cell. As cells get bigger, the volume of that cell increases more quickly than the surface area does. This is why there are no giant amoebas. Factor number four, temperature. As you increase the temperature, you are adding kinetic energy to the molecules that are exposed to that heat. Hotter particles move more quickly than cooler ones. When you add a few drops of food coloring to a beaker of cold water and a beaker of hot water, the food coloring in the beaker with hot water will spread out more quickly. This is because the molecules that are hot are moving faster. Thank you for watching. 